Hi folks, welcome back and thank you so much for joining. I'm Martin with Geosustainable and our little niche at Geosustainable is uh, bioplastics basically. And for that, we make a lot of molds. Uh, silicone, concrete, plaster, wax, uh, sand, quite a variety of medium. And there are limitations to that that can be uh, addressed with something like a 3D printer. So what I've done is I've purchased this. This is the Creality CR10. Unfortunately, this came from the factory with some problems. I experienced thermal runaway. I had issues leveling the bed and uh, the connectivity uh, to a computer. The cable, the uh, something just wasn't working. I could not print from my computer. So I'm going to show you today how I discovered them, how I solved them, diagnosed them, and uh, I'm hoping you can uh, gain something from that should you experience these problems because these are typical problems that will happen during ownership of a 3D printer. So let's get rolling. All right, so uh, for the first part of this assembly, uh, we're going to talk about how to mount the gantry. Now, uh, they have some machine screws underneath that you bolt this down to, and then they have these braces right here. Now, I'm going to talk about how to attach this, uh, the procedure that I would use. Uh, as an engineer, I would never trust to cut in. It's factory cut, I understand, but... Uh, what I have here is something that has been machined and measured, and uh, this will be uh, what I square with. Uh, so the ones underneath, I would turn up and just to snug them up. But these, once I attach these and this on the other side, this is what I would use to determine uh, Z in relation to X and Y. Now, I would always double check. So I use my... Uh, framing square here. Tuck that corner in real good and there should be no movement on my square when I touch either end of the frame and there's not. So I know that I'm completely perpendicular Z in relation to X and Y. Now let's talk about the uh, machine screws underneath here. This is just a little beginner's tip here because you folks are going to try to uh, uh, assemble these yourselves. The machine screw, it's very accurate. It's very nice. Uh, when you start a machine screw, what you'll want to do is you'll want to turn backwards and sometimes a complete revolution and what you, that will set the screw into the first thread. So you want to turn backwards until you hear a click like that and then you can begin to tighten your screw and if you have it set right you should be able to turn this all the way in by hand and uh, we'll use the ball end here to draw it up and I suggest uh, not tightening with the ball end I've snapped them more than once so just snug it up and then come back and tighten it with a little short arm here I would Tighten this only after I've uh, tightened these right here, these side braces right here. So. Now I know that we have a, a perfect Z, we're going to begin leveling the plate. And this is where I found my first problem, was when I began leveling. And let me... S This is a handy little craft table here. It's perfect for the job that I'm doing here. It's very level and stable. And I made this. And if you'd like to see the video and possibly uh, make one yourself, well, I'm going to post a link for that in the information tabs. So let's get on to uh, bed leveling where I discovered my first problem, which was right there. Okay, so the procedure for bed leveling was stated such that we would level one, two, three and then four in the back. So we would do this corner, this corner, this corner, and then this back corner right here. And we would move the extruder down 
put it under power, disable the steppers, have it home, and then from there we would begin leveling with to one paper thickness. Everything was going just fine. until I got to the final one. What turned out was this, there's a spring in here and it compresses. And this is what moves the table up and down according to this little thumb wheel right here, this adjusting knob underneath. This part right here was installed at the factory on here and particularly this part right here was stopping the screw from completely compressing so that I was never able to get my nozzle off of the bed. And I'm going to show you that close up now. All right, so here we are with the close up and as you can see the orange spring in there, that compresses as you turn this knob. And as you loosen it, it raises or lowers this bed right here. But this little device right here was in here. And the purpose of this thing was to hold these wires tight to the bed to keep them from peeling loose. It almost worked. It was never tested in production because this prevented the spring from compressing enough to lower this enough to get it off the nozzle in relation to the rest. So simply remove this and I was able to level the bed without issue. So I'm almost ready to print. All right so quickly before moving on though uh, related to this uh, leveling problem when I first put this glass plate on here and uh, started to put the clips on what I had noticed is the uh, metal plate underneath it was warped and it rocked. Uh, when I put these clips on everything was nice and stable so I went and uh, continued on from there. However after I took this piece off that was preventing the corner over here from leveling the metal plate underneath was uh, completely flat. And I've seen a lot of videos on uh, how to deal with a warped table, but none of them said to take this off and throw it back in the box. Okay, so let's move on to the next issue that I found with this, and that is the uh, connectivity issue. And uh, For that, if you would imagine, everything's been hooked up. Uh, I've taken and I've put my uh, cables on here and I've homed it and everything is just fine. So it homed perfectly. Uh, then I leveled the bed and uh, moved on to this and that's where the very next issue came up. And that is that the computer could not see the printer. So, um, I uh, went to use the TF card. However, in diagnosing the connectivity issue, I found something interesting that helped me diagnose the next problem. So let me get to that. I'm going to connect this to up to the computer so you can see what I saw. All right, all right. Here we are. Computer in reach. Now the slicer program that I chose to use for this was uh, Cura. Uh, I tried Matter Control and then I tried Cura and I liked Cura better. Even though it's not plugged in, it's booting up. It's scavenging power from the laptop. That's curious. 
uh, that that connectivity would be there, but yet uh, the Cura says it doesn't see the printer. So this, uh, there's something wrong, perhaps on the motherboard with the, with this. I was down but not out, so I went to the TF card, and thankfully the TF card worked just fine. And I was able to uh, use FreeCAD to put up a couple of designs and able to download them to the TF card so everything was ready to go. But to begin with, what I did was I inserted the TF card and uh, ran up their test model, and I chose the cat. And I started printing that. And it's broken now. I was playing with it. But uh, this is as far as it got before I got the uh, thermal runaway. And so we're going to look into that. What caused my thermal runaway next. So we don't need this. We're going to look at the extruder because the uh, thermal runaway happened at the extruder. So that's the spot right here. So we're going to undo a couple of screws and take a look to see what happened. We're going to need a Phillips screwdriver once we're inside. And uh, that's not included, by the way. It takes it even smaller. From the factory, these were very tight. All right, that's how you break, and then you use the ball and spin it out. All right, we peel this gently back and up, and we can prop it right up here. And we're gonna move in to this spot right here. Okay, so I want to pay close attention to this screw right here. This is the thermistor right here. And uh, I was going to take that off so that I could measure across it. But what I noticed was it should not be very tight, and it wasn't when I took it off. However, when I took the screw out, the wires had already been smashed <clears throat> a little bit too much for me to accept from the factory. So this is the point right here where I stopped and decided this is going to go back in the box, and this boat anchor is going to go back on the boat. In diagnosing this, should you have this problem, let's take a look at something before I 
uh, close out of this. The other end of this is this cable right here. And it has two, four, six, and eight connectors. Okay. And that translates to two wires for everything that is controlled through this cable. Two of those wires would be for the thermistor. Two of those wires would be for the heater block. And there are two fans on this device, so the other four wires would be two wires each for the appropriate fans. You could meter this out to discover whether this thermistor was shorted right now or whether it was an open from a broken wire. However, uh, I'm sending this back at this point. Okay, so there we have it. Unfortunately, this has to go back in the box. So, uh, this, this is a reboxing video, so to speak. So, I hope you have gained something from this. And uh, I have another printer on the way. But uh, it most certainly, it won't be a creality. Uh, the company has one chance. It's me. Okay, so you take care. Bye-bye now.